ओम नमो भगवते नरसिंहाय ओम नमो भगवते नरसिंहाय नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्णप्रष्ठा कृतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादीपाश्चतिशतारिणे जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभुनिनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासरी गौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे Hare Krishna uh, today from today on the third day is Narsingha Dev appearance day 4th May Chaturdashi Tithi which month <laughs> Vaishak Mas Narsingha Dev appeared in Satya Yug there was a past time Uh, and uh, that led to his appearance in uh, 12th canto bhagavatam there it's written in a purport that just like in this kali yuga there is going to be a satya yug when mahaprabhu comes so in satya yug there was a kali yuga when hiranyakashipu was present even though it was satya yug there was no dosh but for that period sometime one uh, yuga enters in another yuga for for some time so narsingha dev is very prominent in gaudiya sampradaya very pro- it features a lot in uh, leelas and interactions with different acharyas in our sampradaya it's very prominent in shri sampradaya it's from they have temples and uh, but not as much as in gaudiya sampradaya in every altar we have narsingha dev he is known as bhakti vigna vinash in shri sampradaya they take shelter of sudarshan chakra for that purpose although they see sudarshan whenever the deity is there the back on the back the head is narsingha dev so also the that same feature of removing obstacles to bhakti they take shelter of chakra but they see it as also as narsingha dev so narsimha dev appeared as an incarnation of krishna how are we familiar with krishna small bb krishna stealing butter people you know like to worship him bal krishna and very attractive form but so what happened why did krishna come in such a form which was so fierce that even lakshmi did not want to approach fierce because Bull. You got the bull. Yeah, that is many reasons are there. Yeah, that is also there. Um, to because of Hiran Hiranyakashipu, that is uh, there also to save his devotee Prahlad Maharaj, and uh, Narasimha Dev appears in every kalpa. He'll appear because he's a lila avatar. There will be a past time. He'll appear in little in different circumstances every time. or maybe same but there it's not that every single circumstance he'll appear so krishna appeared in this fierce form really fear we can't understand how that demigod powerful demigod brahma and lakshmi who is feel so safe and sheltered under vishnu she could not approach even though it was her lord but in a different form so actually what happened such a fierce form krishna took when krishna does something it's the most he will be the leader in that so most charming bal krishna small boy that all uh, anyone everyone wants in vatsalya ras to to take care of that child but the same krishna when he came in that fierce form nothing is more fierce than that and he came in a form of a lion transcendental form to get some idea you can if you have experience with a lion i don't i don't have much but some experience because we used to go and 
you know, in Africa and uh, see these lions. And one thing is that few things about lion is that it's known as the king of the, all the animals. If the lion will enter a jungle or anyone and just roar, no one will make a sound. Suddenly everyone will fall quiet. Otherwise, jungle is very noisy. But no one wants to give away their position that the lion will come. The lion has such a strength uh, as an animal. Of course, lion came from Narsinga. It's not that Narsinga took form of lion. But to understand that he took this form of Simha. So another thing about lion is, he, it might catch an animal and just put it down and he'll not do anything. He'll just wait like that. And that animal will not run away. Out of frozen, out of fear. Somehow the lion goes away or they chase away, then the animal get up and run. So lion is fierce. In Bhagavad Gita, it's there. Mirganam. I can't remember. Something like Krishna says of animals, I am the lion. Anything which is showing some strength. Or so Krishna, the form of Narsinga, they've appeared in the mood, in the form of half man, half lion. Nur Simha. Nur means human, man. Simha, lion. And uh, that form, it was so fierce that uh, even now, uh, it said that when he roared, the wives of the demons, they who were pregnant, they mis had a miscarriage. That happens in extreme fear. And that roar sound echoed over the whole universe. When Hiranyakashipu, when he was about to come out of the pillar, it says in Bhagavatam that there was a loud sound. No one could understand where it came from. They were all looking around, where did it come? But it was such a fierce sound. They were anticipating something will happen. So they were afraid. Whenever we speak of Narasimha Dev, we speak about Prahlad Maharaj. Although Bhakti Sananda Sushi Thakur said, Hiranyakashipu did more to spread the glories of Narasimha Dev than Prahlad Maharaj. Because of him, Narasimha Dev came. So we are grateful in one way that he appeared, Narasimha Dev appeared. So when he appeared, he came to save his devotee, Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj is a devotee of Krishna. <laughs> he was worshipping Krishna. If you read the shlokas, he was glorifying Krishna. Actually, that word is there, Krishna. But when uh, Narasimha Dev appeared, he could understand. He could see Krishna. Prabhupada said one thing. If, if there's a very pious person, even in different religions, different religious system. But when he comes across the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even in another religious system, he'll recognize. And Prabhupada gave an analogy, like uh, even supposing a man wears some different costume, he looks different, his family won't recognize him, but the dog will. Dog will recognize. He'll come and smell and he'll understand, this is my master. He'll, whatever he wears, he'll recognize. So a, really a genuine devotee, when the Supreme Personality of Godhead appears, or he comes across him, maybe in a different religious system, but he'll recognize this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is my worship of a master. So Prahlad Maharaj was spiritually perfect and he recognized. As soon as he saw Narasimha Dev, he understood this is my will because he was on that level. But others were afraid, there was a lot of confusion. In Gaudiya Sampradaya, Narasimha Dev appears in a very prominent form. Of course, we mentioned that he is in other Sampradayas, not so much. Um, in uh, Sri Sampradaya, many temples are there. In Gaudiya Sampradaya, from the beginning, Mahaprabhu's pastimes, Narasimha Dev appeared. Uh, was manifest in many ways. Mahaprabhu himself, when he appeared, there was an exp uh, can I just inform it's Vidabhis. When Mahaprabhu appeared, it was 
documented in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita, um, Adi Lila, chapter 17, Adi Lila. So it says, sorry, Adi, chapter 330, Adi Lila, chapter 3. So in uh, Adi Lila, chapter 3, text 30, it's explained that Mahaprabhu appeared. And when he appeared, the expression is given that he appeared, Singhera, like a lion, he appeared. And they describe that in another part, it's described that he had the roar like a lion, shoulders like a lion, and gait like a lion. Gait means how he'll walk whenever he moves. That's explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita. But his appearance, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll find it. So in chapter 3, text 30, they explain the appearance of Mahaprabhu. Then it says, Chaitanya, Chaitanya Singhera Navadipe Avatar Simha Griva Singha Virya Singhera Hankar. Thus the lion-like Lord Chaitanya has appeared in Navadip. He has the shoulders of a lion. He has the power of a lion and the loud voice of a lion. It's compared to lion. Because uh, Mahaprabhu's preaching was supposed to destroy and uh, clear the way, clear all the atheists, Shunyavad, Nirvisheshvad, so that pushing mood had to be there in this Sankirtan movement, pushing, conquering, and uh, the lion it gives that kind of mood. So it's compared there. So from the beginning, Mahaprabhu's pastimes. Chaitanya, uh, the Narsingadeva was prominent, for example, in Jagannath Puri. Jagannath Puri, he used to go to Gundicha te temple, next to Gundicha, there's a Narsingadeva temple. We didn't go there. We didn't go to <laughs> Narsingadeva Puri. So, 1790. Adi. So in uh, Gundicha, he used to worship Narsingadev and he actually sang the song that what we sing now in Iskon. Narsinga Stuti. He used to sing that. Uh, he just like he cleaned the Gundicha temple, he also cleaned Narsinga temple. When uh, Jagannath appeared, he was installed by Lord Brahma. But uh, we have different narrations of how Jagannath was installed. And there, one of them it says that Narad Muni came with the form of Narsingadev. And in the Dumna was told, before installing Jagannath, install Narsingadev. So they were, he, then he went away. And all, everyone was waiting in the Dumna with his associates. And then they heard a loud sound like a roar and they all looked around in fear. Then Narad Muni descended with Narsingadev, which they installed next to Gundicha temple in Jagannath Puri. He was installed and worshipped and it said that when they installed him, he came with jewels and clothes and his form was effulgent. It was completely in Aishwarya Bhara. Now we don't see that because we are different level of jivas, but that is the vision of the deity. And then after that they installed Lord Jagannath. Within Lord Jagannath, at the back, there's a Narsinga temple. We went. And uh, Lord Chaitanya used to go there also. So in Gaudiya Sampradaya, Narsinga Dev is prominent. After Mahaprabhu, oh, there's one pastime also that uh, Mahaprabhu once went to Shiva's Thakur and told him to. How are you that? told him to chant, uh, it said, Brihat Sahasrana, chapter 1790, Adi Lila. <coughs> Mahaprabhu went to Shiva's Thakur and told him to, ch and it's written there in the shloka, chant Brihat Sahasrana, that is uh, Vishnu Sahasrana. Actually, even in uh, Sahas Vishnu Sahasrana is in our movement also. Before all Brahmanas would chant it, memorize and chant it. It was one of the two, it's known as one of the two jewels of Mahabharata, Bhagavad Gita, Vishnu Sahasrana. 
So they would chant it. So Shiva's Thakur, Mahaprabhu appeared to him, uh, came to him and told him to chant. So he started to chant the different uh, names of Vishnu. And then he came to Narasimhadev. And, and this is not the one. Oh, Bhagavad No, see, Adi Lila. So I'll read out uh, Mahaprabhu when he came to Shiva's Thakur this past time, where he took the mood of Narsingadev. Okay. So here, one day, the Lord, I'll read that, uh, Egdina Prabhu Shiva Seda Agya Dila, Brahat Sahasra Nam Pada. Shunite Mana Haila. One day the Lord ordered Shiva's Thakur to read the Brihat Sahasranam. It's he it says in bracket, the thousand names of Lord Vishnu. For he wanted to hear them at that time. Pardite Aila Stave Narishing Hera Na Narishing Hera Nama Shunya Vishta Haila Prabhu Gauradhama. As he read the thousand names of the Lord. In the course of the holy name of Lord Narsim, the holy name of Lord Narsima, they have appeared. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard the holy name of Lord Narsima, he became fully absorbed in the thought of Narsima Dev. So Prabhupada writes that uh, Shiva, Shiva's Pandit was performing the Shad ceremony for his father. And as his customary, he was hearing the thousand names of Lord Vishnu. At that time, Gora Hari appeared at the scene and he also began to hear thousand names of Vishnu with full satisfaction. When, thus, when he thus heard the holy name of Lord Narasimha, Lord Chaitanya became absorbed in the thought. He became angry like Narasimha Prabhu. In his angry mood, his eyes became red. His bodily hair stood on end and all the parts of his body trembled. He made a thundering sound. All of a sudden, he took up a club and people became greatly afraid, thinking we do not know what kind of offense we have committed. But then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu adjusted his thought and sat down on his seat. Okay, this continues. Narsimha Avesha Prabhu Hate Gadalanya Pashandi Marite Yaya Nagare Dhaya. In the mood of Lord Narasimha Dev, Lord Chaitanya ran through the city streets, club in hand, ready to kill all the atheists. Seeing him appearing very fierce in the ecstasy of Lord Narasimha, people ran from the street and fled here and there, afraid of his anger. Loka bhaya deki prabhura bahya haila shivasa grihete giya gada felaila. Seeing the people so afraid, the Lord came to his external senses and thus returned to the house of Shiva's Thakur and threw away the club. So, here, in, right in uh, Mahaprabhu's pastimes, Nushinga Deva appears. <laughs> After Mahaprabhu, Rasikananda, during Rasikananda's pastimes, the time uh, Rasikananda was preaching in Orissa, they were, it was partly ruled by the Muslims, but it mentioned there that they were also atheistic people who were not in favor of Vedic culture. So, sometime they threatened him or they wanted to attack him because he roamed around freely. He was uh, directly associate of Krishna and he came for a purpose. He was Nitya Mukta Jeev. So he came to preach. He was preaching, and uh, the demons, Yavanas, they were threatening him. But when that happened, Narsingadev came in the dream and threatened, or dream, I should say, nightmare, <laughs> and came and threatened them, and physically even beat them. And actually, that happened to Chand Kazi also in Mahaprabhu Leela. So that happened to Rasikananda, uh, Rasikananda's. Uh, uh, um, opponents when they try to attack him and we see that as this Gaudiya Sampradaya is uh, coming down Narasimha Dev has been very closely associated and that is understandable because this is 
Kali Yuga. Mahaprabhu comes in Kali Yuga. This movement comes in Kali Yuga. And Gaudiya Sampradaya means spread Krishna, Krishna consciousness, God consciousness. But the demons are so many, they'll oppose it. At the same time, this movement is, is, did not come like in Dwapar Yuga, where there was a fight and there were physical, there was violence. Krishna killed demons, Pandavas fought in Kurukshetra, and Arjun killed so many demons. Bhima killed demons. In Eka Chakra, he killed him. so many prominent. Even uh, Lord Ram in his time, Lord Ram killed demons. Then they, he fought a war. But this age is different. Why? Everyone is a demon. Who will you kill? How many? So then movement will spread, but not through violence. At the same time, it has to spread. And the demon atheists have to be curbed. Parshandalan. They have to, we have to subdue atheists. So Lord Narsingadev, is featured prominently in our Sampradaya for protection of devotees. But as often we had to explain that Narasimha Dev appeared to Prahlad Maharaj. Of course, when he came, he killed Hiranyakashipu. But the form of Narasimha Dev is known as Bhakti Vigna Vinasha. Not so much violently, that's not it. But it, it may come to that because he removes obstacles to devotion and sometimes that violence will be necessary. So that will be there. But uh, he's known as Bhakti Vigna Vinash. The principle is that when there's an obstacle to devotional service, he helps to overcome that. On the altar, the Srila Prabhupada taught us, we have uh, Mool Vigraha, Radha Krishna, Jagannath, then uh, second devil, Mahaprabhu, Panchatattva, and Lord Narasimhadev. Then the Guru Parampara. So during the, our worship, we sing Narasimha Stuti. Because worship, we also worship and pray that our obstacles are overcome. So Narasimha Dev is, in every, every single day we sing, twice a day, in the morning and evening. Prabhupada organized it like that. But uh, yeah, I was saying about uh, in the Gaudiya Sampradaya, that Mahaprabhu's interaction with uh, Narasimha Dev, there were many of them, if you see Chaitanya Leela. He also came to South India and visited these prominent temples like uh, Panaka Narasimha. He went to, he went to Ahobilam. There may be others which are not documented. So many are there in South India. Then, yeah, after him, Rasikananda. And uh, they, had, they may be others also, other... Um, associations with our in our Guru Parampara, but Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he found a yoga pit, eternally it's existing, but he found it, he again located it, and he built a temple there and facility for people to come and take darshan. That was a mission of Bhaktivinoda Thakur to clear the places of past times because he was continuing the work of the six Goswamis. They were given the task in Vrindavan, but he took it upon himself to, the word is reveal, the reveal the dham, Navadip dham. Later he gave his son and disciple and successor, grand successor, the same task to reveal the dham, Gora Nam, Gora Dham, Gora Kam. Service to Gorna, Gordam, Gorakam. So Bhakti Thakur, when he established Yogapit, there were some difficulties with people. They would come there and attack the facility. So he established a, a nursing a deity, which is there for everyone to see. And uh, so after he established the deity, there was no more problem. Nursing Dev has that reputation. After Bhakti Thakur, Bhakti Santasasri Thakur. He has another name. What is that? Actually, yeah, Lion Guru. Actually, Lion Guru, that is it. In English, it's from, but actually, it was Keshari. Keshari means lion. Singha Guru. Yakarsim means he's Lion Guru. But the actual root word that it was translated was Keshar. Keshar means lion also. Keshar Guru. So, Bhakti Sanatana took that mood again. Bhakti Thakur was not like that. But 
Bhakti Siddhanta took that mood because if we read his biographical work, he had a very big challenge. Of course, big for us. For him, it was not a big challenge. <laughs> but he had to re-establish Gaudiya Siddhanta in the pure form. And Rupanuga Virudapa Siddhanta Dwanta Harine. He removed anything which was not in exact pursuance of Rupa Goswami's teaching of Gaudiya Sampradaya. So he took on a very fierce form. Fierce means simha, <laughs> lion-like form, to subdue the atheists and to properly establish the pure form. So for that he was very forceful and very heavy. Then he became to be he came to be known as Simha Guru, lion like Guru. Many pastimes uh, there was someone in uh, who was based in Jagannath Puri who concocted a, a, another mantra saying that we should not chant Hare Krishna loudly. Still today they exist these people. Nitai Radesham, Japa Hare Krishna Hare Ram, something like that. I don't know how it starts. Anyway, so he started that, and then uh, Bhakti Sansoji Thakur was furious and he counted him. He wrote in his journal so many things against him. And whenever they would be singing, then they, they, somehow their mat was, they had to pass Purushottamat in Jagannath Puri. So whenever they would come, someone will ring a bell, the bell was ready, and every single devotee in Purushottamat, there were so many that time, they'll come and loudly chant Hare Krishna to counter their chanting. That was Mahaprabhu's mood, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta's mood. And even on the street, he took on that mood that it's written in this book called Bhakti Siddhanta Vaibhav. That on the street, he, he, he saw anyone walking, he'll run up to them and tell them, this chant is bogus, you should not hear. And people thought, what a maniac, why is he like that? He used to come forcefully and just catch people on the street. Don't chant this mantra, this is not. He was so dedicated to the truth that he didn't care about his fame, what people think, he had to establish it. So he was known as Keshuri Guru. In Srila Prabhupada's time, as this movement was spreading, at some, time, at some point there's a recording that Srila Prabhupada said, okay, this movement is spreading and now <clears throat> demons are getting disturbed, so they're beginning to counter. In fact, that Prabhupada said showed the success of our movement. When people get disturbed, it shows that. So, then he taught this song, Narsimha Stuti. Actually, what we sing in Iskorn, as you may know, is a combination of two or three different. It's one mantra, then a passage from Jayadev Goswami's uh, Dashavatar Stotra. Three, and then there's one, another part. So, three uh, sources are there to make our Narasimha Stuti. But, uh, of course, it's eternal. Mahaprabhu used to sing that. And uh, he'd also sing other mantras, which we know now. Other glorifications. Jai Narasimha, Shri Narasimha, that is sang in Mayapur. Om Namo Bhagati Narasimhaya, Namaste, Jaste, Shaviravid, Bhava, Vajanaka, Vajadamsta, Karmashin, Randaya, Randaya, Tamo, Grasa, Grasa, Om, Saha, like that. That. So different prayers and uh, it was always there. But now Srila Prabhupada, he established this chant every day. He said he, he led it, he sang it and he told everyone repeat after me in the recording we can hear. So he, they sang after him and he said this should be sang in the morning after Guru Rashtak and in the evening after Gorar. Other parts of the day they may sing any time. But he said we should sing this mantra now, that it will protect the devotees from obstacles to uh, spreading our movement. So in, in ISKCON it's very prominent. And after Srila Prabhupada taught it, they, we heard many pastimes where people sang this mantra. Many book distributors in the West, they came under physical threat, violence or any other kind of threat. And they'll be singing and then one narration in Germany, someone was singing this mantra and because uh, he was threatened and no way out of no way a really angry fierce dog came and attacked someone and attacked him so badly that people had to intervene <laughs> so after Srila Prabhupada taught it it was 
sang daily and everyone took shelter. Later on, even in our ISKCON, Mayapur, there was a threat and uh, two times there was a threat of people attacking. And that place is little bit remote. Who will protect? There was no army, no police that time, properly present to protect. So in pursuance of Bakno Thakur, who established Narsingadev there, they also established Narsingadev in Iskon Mayapur for protection of devotees. Every Narsing Chaturdasi, we celebrate appearance of Narsimha Dev. He appeared at dusk. Okay, what is dusk? Sandhya. Yeah, Sandhya, that's a broad term, but there's a specific definition. Dusk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. So what is dusk? I'll explain. Is that when the sun has already set, and between the time when the sun has set and it's fully dark, uh, it's the last quarter of that period. You understand? Last quarter. If you divide that period into four, the fourth quarter of that period, that is dusk. Practically it's dark, but not yet. So at that time, uh, Narsingadev appeared. And uh, so at, that's the time we observe it until. We observe fasting. And then at finally at dusk, we break the fast. And then we read the pastime of Narsingadev's appearance. We recall him and we recall Prahlad Maharaj's prayers. It's narrated in 7th Canto Bhagavatam, which is practically all dedicated, almost all dedicated to Narsingadev's Leela. Almost all of it. Now you can understand that uh, this Srimad Bhagavatam is Purana Mamalam, pure, and it is supposed to be the foremost of all the Shastras. When Lord Shiva was narrating in a shloka all the 18 Puranas, he narrated the names of all the Puranas. But Bhagavat, he said, Shubha Bhagavat and the auspicious Bhagavat, he put that prefix. So it's very significant that this Shastra, which is explaining all avatars, when it's explaining about Narsingha Dev, explained much more detail that it is an important avatar of Krishna. As we know, there are six kind of avatars given. For example, uh, it's listed as uh, Manvantra avatar. Guna avatar, Purusha avatar, Leela avatar, Shakti Avesh avatar, and guna. I said I said Guna, Yoga avatar. Yuga avatar, six types. So Narsingha Dev is, yeah. yeah I said it. Okay, Leela avatar, he appears. The past time happens, so that will happen every, in every kalpa, every Satya Tritha Dwapar Yuga. This, this will happen. So, out of all the different uh, leelas that happen, we see that in Bhagavatam, it's narrated in so much detail that Narsingha Dev appears to save his devotee and to kill the demons. But that form that appeared, it's that fierceness, as we said that when Krishna takes on something, he takes it in full more than anything else, anyone else. So he took on the form of Narsingha, which is a fierce form. But that fierceness, we can only read about it, but actually it's very fierce. When I was, uh, I was in one uh, temple once in the beginning, when I was joining the movement, and someone was repeating, new person, Narsingha, I want to meet Narsingha, I want to see Narsingha, I want to. He was very much attracted. Then after some time, that preacher told her to be careful. You want to meet Narsingha? He said, be careful. You're repeating again. The form of Narsingha Dev, he'll come. But uh, he will uproot everything. And all the anarthas, and he'll do it very, uh, how do you say, without any gentleness. But you'll get the mercy. But suddenly, very heavily. So, can you take it? <laughs> and that's why, I heard at that time that Ugra, Ugra Narasimha form 
generally people are, who know about it, they will be careful to worship or not. But our movement is very much renunciation oriented. Srila Prabhupada, all our acharyas. So it's, uh, it's featured prominently. But uh, we'll see in other sampradayas yet Yoga Narasimha and uh, Lakshmi Narasimha is much more prominent, generally speaking. So when Narasimha Dev appears in Ugra Narasimha form, they're different forms, but he's so fierce that he will uproot everything and we'll find chaos in our life, and, but, but you will get purified. You will get purified. If you have that courage to come before him and say, uproot all my anarthas, he'll do it. But uh, it can be very uh, uh, highly purifying, you know, which word to use. So Narasimha Dev appeared in Satya Yuga to Prahlad Maharaj. Prahlad Maharaj was a devotee of Krishna. He was being tormented by his father. Prahlad Maharaj was a pure devotee because he heard Katha, uh, he heard Krishna Katha from birth in his mother's womb through Narad Muni. So he accepted Narad Muni as his guru. When he appeared, Hiranyakashipu considered Vishnu his enemy. So he was trying to bring up Prahlad Maharaj as a demon, Asur, and taught him accordingly and didn't let him associate with Vaishnavas at all. But Prahlad Maharaj had gotten the lesson before birth. Not only was he very much a devotee, but uh, as a devotee on Madhyama and Uttama Dikari, they are very much oriented to preaching. So he was preaching among his student uh, classmates. And so that was showing his advancement. As Prahlad Maharaj, as the pastime went on, his father asked him, what is the best thing you learned? So on the first occasion, he explained, Shavanam, Kitanam, Vishnu, Smaranam. Then his father got surprised and angry. How did you learn this? How did you learn about Bhakti? I didn't give you this association. Neither did, uh, is anyone allowed to come near to you, who is a Vaishnav. So he chastised the Gurukuli teacher, Gurukul teachers, Shanda and Amarka, and warned them that this should not continue, be careful, and they were in fear. So then they were very careful to teach him atheistic concepts. But again, second time, his father called him and asked him, what is the best thing you learned in and then he said Matirna Krishna Parata Svatova he said that people who are absorbed in household life and material life cannot become Krishna conscious. They have taken a vow to enjoy this material world. Neither they can become Krishna conscious, neither can someone make them, and neither can they be a conference. Matirna Krishna Parata Svatova Mithobi Badyate Prahavratana. Neither can many people come together to change them. So in other words, he was saying, uh, previous Acharya say that uh, he's telling his father that don't worry father, this, what I have learned, it'll, you, you will not get it. You will not be able to understand it. Neither will you ever get it because you have taken a vow to remain. So anyway, his father again got angry, this time threatened to kill him and tried to kill him in different ways. But because Prahlad Maharaj was a pure devotee, he was saved. And towards the end, when his father was frustrated and asked him, where are you getting your power? He said, same place you are getting. From Vishnu. Where is Vishnu? He's everywhere. He's everywhere. So he's in this pillar. Yes. So he tried to break the pillar. And Narsingadev came out to show that my devotee's word is final, that if he says that, I will follow. Yes, he's in this pillar. Yes, so I'm in the pillar. So he came out of the pillar. Then in a short time, he destroyed Hiranyakashipu, then his whole army. And then he established Prahlad Maharaj as a ruler. <coughs> so whenever we speak of Narasimhadev, then we speak of Prahlad Maharaj, great devotee of Narasimhadev. And his prayers are given in the seventh canto. Prahlad Maharaj and Dhruv Maharaj prayers were the favorite of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He used to you know, ask his followers to read the prayers. Same with uh, Srila Prabhupada himself. 
Srila Prabhupada very much like to hear these prayers. These prayers are very much in Sambandha Gyan. How, to, how the jiva bound by his material desires in this material world can come to purity. Explaining his position and warning against, uh, um, uh, revealing the truth about this material world. Many verses are there, I can't, I can't pretend to know them. There is one verse, um, he speaks about how the real shelter, you mentioned that in the card, Balagra, Bala, what's it? Palasya Nehashanam Pitra Unarsima Nartasya Chagadam Udanvati Majatona Taptasya Pratividhi Yaihan Jase Ihan Jase Stas Tavad Vibho Tavad Vibho Yatupekshitanam Anam Tavad Vibho Yatupekshitanam I can't recall the last line properly but he says there that a child for a child Parent is not a shelter and for, for someone who is drowning even a boat is not a shelter and for someone who is sick medicine cannot help if they don't get your mercy Narsingadev and anyone suffering taptasya pratividhirya ihan jaseshtas tavad vibho yad upekshita naam that if, if Narsingadev you don't give your mercy then no one can be saved even if they have a shelter Someone has a medicine to cure him, but he won't be saved if you don't give your mercy. Child takes shelter of parent, naturally, but even the parent cannot give shelter if, if it's not given by Narsinga. He doesn't give, uh, sanction. Somebody is drowning, if you get a boat, good, I'm saved. Yes, but not if Narsinga doesn't give sanction. So actually shelters Narsinga And so Prahlad Maharaj, his realizations, he's speaking. Actual shelter is nourishing Adev. In another verse, he speaks about preaching. Mm, again, can't remember all the verse. Uh, what is that? Um, Nivritta Monam mm, Charatiya. So he speaks about in that verse that those who want to, this, some people take a vow of silence. Then they go to the Himalayas and just meditate. He says, as for me, I cannot give up these poor fools and rascals in this material world. What? He, he says, I cannot give up these fools and rascals. What is that um, shloka beginning? Prayena munayo deva maunam charanti vijane Should have had it ready. Anyway, so he says that in one shloka, that uh, I cannot give up these poor suffering fools in this material world. I am not going to go and observe the vow of silence and become self-realized. I cannot give up these people. They have no other shelter. They have taken shelter of this material sense gratification and that is not a shelter. So the prayers of, of Prahlad Maharaj, they reveal very deep nature of this material world. He speaks Nate Vidu Swadkatim Hi Vishnu. That the people in general do not know that the real shelter is Vishnu. They take shelter of people who are blind. And being blind, they fall in a well, Andayatandir Upaniyamanina. They fall in a well and all the people who follow them also fall. They don't they cannot lead anyone. If someone doesn't know that Vishnu is the ultimate guide. Durashaya Bahirartha Manina. They take shelter. Durasha. They have desires to enjoy in this material world. Ashaya and Bahirartha Manina. They take in this material world to be all in all. So in this way, Prahlad Mahaj is exactly attacking this material tendencies in his prayers. Especially one particular chapter, prayers of uh, Prahlad Mahaj after Narsingha Dev appeared. And they are so amazing for a Krishna conscious movement. For someone to develop, to, to become liberated, we have to understand nature of this material world and how we are bound up. So Prahlad Mahaj reveals that. Famous verses, another one, Tat Sadhumanye Suravaryam Dehinam Sada Samudvigna Asadgraha Nasadu. Huh? 
Hitatapatam Grahamanda Kupam Vanam Gato Yadhari Mashayeta. So yeah, he says that one who has uh, one who accepted the body as the self, that he says that Sadhamani Atsuravaryam Sada Samud Vigna, he's always in anxiety. If someone accepts the body as his self, he's always in anxiety. Samud Vigna Asad Graha. And uh, then everything related to the body he'll accept as his. So such a person will be very disturbed. So what should he do? He says, Hitva, give up. Hitva, Atma Patam. Atma Patam is a very interesting word to a translation. Atma Patam means the place where self realization stops. Hitva, Atma Patam, Gurham, Andakupam, give up household life which is a uh, andhakupam, like a blind well where we, we can, no one can practice self-realization. Hitva atmapatam gurham andhakupam vanam gato yadhari maashreta. Go to the forest and surrender to Hari. This is Prahlad Maharaj, five-year-old boy. <laughs> His instruction. And uh, then Prabhupada translates, it says, vanam gato, go to the forest. Prabhupada writes, Vrindavan means go to Iskon Vrindavan, <laughs> go to Vrindavan, take shelter and serve there to come out of this illusion. Again, you see, he's a five-year-old boy, but some of his verses uh, revealing the nature of this material world. Hmm, what is the beginning of that one? Yanmuthana adhigramedi sukkam hitucham kanduyane na karayori va dukha dukham Tripyanti naiha kripana bahudukha bhaja kandudvena manasijam vishaheta dhiraha. He speaks about uh, the sex desire. He says, Yan maitanadi grahamedi sukham hitucham. Yan maitanadi. Maitan adi. That means sex, and then it's hearing about it, seeing it, endeavoring for it, reading about it, everything connected to that. He says that. Hitva yan maithanadi grahamedi sukham hi tucham. That any happiness related to that is insignificant. Insignificant. Any happiness related to sex desire. Yan maithanadi grahamedi sukham hi tucham. Kandu yanena karyo riva dukha dukham. Again, five year old boy is speaking. That actually, what is sex desire? He says, it's like an itch. It's an itch. Kandu yanena kayor karayor iva. It's like an itch which you want to scratch. Say, but don't scratch. Don't scratch. If we scratch, what happens? You scratch. It's itching. Yeah, but you have to scratch. But with the itch, what happens? If you ignore, okay, if you scratch, you have to scratch more. Then again more, and then more, and more, and, more, and then blood comes. Then you're thinking, oh, I should not have scratched. Why did I do that? <laughs> I should have just ignored it. Now what happened? So he says that Kandayena Karayor Iva Dukha Dukham. It's source of suffering. Tripyanti Naiha Kripana. Kripana means the people who have got the form of human life, but they're using it just for this sense gratification, the form of sex. So Tripyanti Naiha Kripana. But these people, they'll never be happy with this with uh, this form of happiness, sex design. Tripyanti naiha kripana, bahu dukkha bhaja, but rather they'll suffer a lot. It's a, so it's a result, it results from, it results in suffering. And Prabhupada, when he speaks on this verse, he said it results in suffering whether it's legal or illegal. If it's illegal, illegal means illicit, out of Shastra, they're suffering. Suffering in the sense, um, loss of physical strength, mental strength, loss of many qualities are lost, character, good qualities and um, yeah and then disease yeah that comes and if it is legal, illicit, illicit, nothing wrong but then Prabhupada said then suffering comes and he says children, <laughs> Prabhupada said <laughs> suffering, it results in children and then so he says, uh, yeah, it says that Tripyanti naiha kripana bahudukkha bhaja. 
actually it results in a lot of suffering. Kandutvena manasijam visheta dira. So, one who tolerates the itch, he is known as an intelligent person. He, he, he is just thinking what will happen, better tolerate that itch. It's an itch on the skin which we should tolerate. So, when we speak of Narsingadev, we speak of Prahlad Maharaj. Narsingadev is Bhakti Vigna Vinash. He'll remove the obstacles and his devotee will be exemplary in that form. He'll be the very much uh, taking on that mood in the form of his prayers. So, many we take shelter of his prayers, especially Sadak, us who are in Sadhana Bhakti, not reach that stage of Raganuga, which is basically everyone almost, 99.9% .9 of the devotional devotee population on the planet so for us taking shelter of Prahlad Maharaj's prayers very beneficial memorizing these verses and meditating on them they reveal the, that they help us to come uh, establish that Sambandha with Krishna their Sambandha Gyan prayers on that level that we need Bhagavatam consists of very other nice parts which are very pleasurable to hear like Gopi, Krishna's pastimes, Bal Krishna Leela, so many. But uh, for us, this is the Bhagavatam that we should hear and meditate on. So when this uh, day of Nachin Chaturdasi comes, it's coming few days, then uh, we remember the prayers and we read and uh, take shelter of Prahlad Maharaj who was able to overcome Hiranyakashipu. Who, de who defeated all the demigods. He took over the administration of each of the demigods and he occupied Indra's palace. Now, who will fight him? How will you fight him? But Prahlad Maharaj conquered him through his devotion. And so, any obstacle to bhakti we can take shelter of through sh uh, taking shelter of Narsingadev. But we should be aware that if we took shelter and it didn't happen, then that's for our good. That's uh, something beneficial we should go through. Okay, Hare Krishna. Shri Nashingadeva Bhagwan Ki Jai.